But one area which we are not now looking at is direct energy weapon. They know aircraft nothing. You have a surface to uh, per ground, you have a, a very intense laser beam or you have electromagnetic pulse. So with that, you are now able to now destroy the aircraft. And I think that these are very heavy. It cannot be carried on a uh, fighter. It cannot even be carried on a bomber. But a lot of work is going on whereby they want to reduce the size of these fellows to a level where at least in a big aircraft it can be carried. So they are going to be the future threat, okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so let us see, we have lots of air superiority fighters I talked and there are a lot of missiles or air to air missiles, okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Very stuff, there are a huge number of uh, airborne weapons and uh, sometimes we do not teach uh, about weapons to in our classes, but uh, an aircraft is as good as the weapon it carries. Okay. So, you must have a feel of what kind of weapons we are doing, what kind of radars we are carrying, okay. that is what it is. <clears throat> and there are two things that happens. This I thought you should know because it determines the kind of aircraft you know. There are what you call tail aspect weapons. That means uh, the infrared missiles what you used to have, they will sense the infrared signature in the hotter the what you call the uh, surface are the, the hottest part is the engine, okay. So, from rear only they were able to catch them, okay. So, those days the aircraft will go rear of the adversary's aircraft and fire the infrared missile. But later on the missiles become so good that even a 30, 40 degrees temperature difference they are able to detect. Then they come to what you call all aspect weapons. That means from any direction they are able to fire. Okay, now, all the missiles what we are talking, they all are all aspects. Okay. There are two types, one called on bore side weapons and off bore side weapons. So, you have to do a bore side uh, what you call uh, there uh, to do this kind earlier, but now there are off bore side. Um, I am, my bore side is looking at, but I can fire on the other direction. Okay. So, you can see not only aircraft, the weapons have now come to such a level. Uh, you are able to do all aspect, you are able to see from a distance. So, the old co uh, close combat or dog fight is only now left to the dogs, okay. <laughs> oh, no fighters can are required to do any dog fights, okay. Okay, that is the kind of thing because weapons and radar plus jammers, these electronics, these three fellows have changed the way we fight a war, okay. And unmanned aircraft have changed the way whether the man is going to be inside or eating sandwich and fighting the war. <laughs> so that is what it is, okay. So you see surface to air missile, for example, Akash is a beautiful missile, Akash 1, Akash 2 and all the surface to air missiles, multi barrel, multi thing, are very, very active. Suddenly from um, today the army, navy, air force, not only India, all over the, all around us, they are asking for this missile. This is what our friends in DRDL has developed. And the need is now in thousands, okay. In fact, there are at least two dozen industries have been established just to make this missile. So, that is the kind of scenario where we are. Do we sell Akash? Huh? Do we sell Akash? I mean, do we sell missiles? Do we? Do we, do we sell, sell missiles? missiles to yeah. the they are all thinking. Now, you see, the government is now thinking that they can certainly sell to some of the friendly countries, okay. They are thinking. They are very much in the consideration. Only our army, air force, navy says, Hamko do before you give to others. <laughs> See, that is where we have a problem of what you call scaling up. <laughs> See, it is one thing to make some 20 missiles per year and do trials and all. Suddenly, if the trials are successful and you are there, the 20 should become 200, 200 should become 2000, 2000 should become 20,000. Can you scale it up? That is the thing. There is manufacturing technology. I have not talked about that. How do I scale up? The way you design. Design for manufacturing, yeah, that is what we have to do, so that I can scale it up. The great thing about the Americans was, uh, during the Second World War was, they were able to scale up to such a level, that a day an aircraft was coming out, and that a day they were making five, but simple aircraft no doubt, but that was the kind of scale, where Europe could not do that, okay. So, that is how the dominance came from them, 
okay. This is the kind of kill zone what you call in with each uh, what you call missile uh, there are all the types of missiles we are talking about all Trishul I have given here okay. This is the time this is the zone okay. altitude this range in this area they are protecting your area okay. Beyond that only uh, enemy aircraft can enter. You need to know what these kind of things are. Now let us see this fellow. What are the air to air requirements they are evaluating? Fast high speed VMAX and climb rate previously viewed as dominant requirement because enemy aircraft used to come at high altitude. You go up like MiG-21 aircraft and all, you climb up as, as fast as possible and fast you reach there and intercept them. So that was the character. Speed, okay, rate of climb, these are the kind of things which are there. Now, so, uh, <coughs> then we talked about dog fights, air to air combat, close combat what we call, there you have to high sustained maneuverability for a dog fight. Because you have to sustain yourself some 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 5 minutes they used to say, you, the fellow who is able to sustain for a longer time, he is able to win the war. Because you take longer time and you are going behind the enemy, yeah, you are firing the missile. Until you go behind him, you can't fire. That will also trying to go behind you. The one who can stay longer and fire, then what happened the situation? I do not have to go behind. If I can point my missile towards him for a few seconds, because the missile uh, sensor, uh, what you call it, should lock up. Until you lock on, I must hold him, okay? Then khatam ho gaya. Okay, that is what we have to do. So it has changed. Okay, now then, then what you are talking about rapid changes between offense and defense. You go on changing the positions and enhance the instantaneous maneuverability. Suddenly, I must be able to turn without getting into a post -tall. Okay, I must end point for just that couple of seconds. If I am able to do, I wonder what. Okay, sustained so person. Now, now they are talking about. Can I go at such a high speed? And so, so that before the enemy radar can detect, identify and say I am the enemy. You are asking that question, am I enemy? Well, that will take uh, one second, half a second. But before that happens, my supersonic aircraft has uh, escaped and stealth. One is I am strong, uh, stealthy, I am supersonic. So what happens? So before I am detected, once let us say that fellow also is capable of detecting. By the time he detected, I'm a, my speed is so hard, I have left that place. I have damaged and disappeared, D and D, okay. <laughs> so that is what happens. So now what we are talking, 50 general fighter, what we are talking, F-35, F-22, they are talking of supersonic cruise and stealth, okay. These are the kind of things, okay. This is what we are calling about. Cruise without afterburner. Without afterburner. That is the supersonic cruise means, afterburner on means what will happen, uh, the um, signatures will increase plus their endurance will come down, okay. That is what we are talking about. So that means engine technology is no longer you are talking about aircraft, you are talking about engine. And <clears throat> so what we are talking, what are the uncertainties? Positive, uh, all long range identification, warning and control in high density. The question what you are asking, so many fighters are there, so many helicopters are there, so many fellows are there, who is my friend, who is my enemy, I do not know, yeah. how do I know that? Though while I am telling information friend and foe, uh, uh, good concept being used for last 50 years, but still it has its limitation. Somebody can uh, what you call jam that fellow. So far it is not easy because it is uh, so jamming uh, bandwidth is high you can easily jam. If the bandwidth is very low it is difficult to jam. So those kind of issues are there but they are the problem. They are the real problems what we are talking. So, uh, so before short range sensors, short range limited aspect weapons, visual identification, low lethality, simple impact of number. Now long range, long range identification, all aspect mission, improved lethality weapons, multi bogey environment and complex numbers. That is what we are talking about. So normally this is what you all have been taught. We are taught, told if thrust to weight ratio is high for an aircraft, it will have um, very good rate of climb, it can ink speed, uh, what you call rate of acceleration will be good and uh, so they should be there. But when I want a very high thrust to weight ratio, then uh, you have other limitations, you have to have en engine weight will increase, how do you do that? These are the kind of technological problem, but this is what a good guidance. Then we are talking about sustained uh, turn rate, okay. So there used to be very high turn rates earlier, then when they have come down, but now they have, but now they have all reached a plateau. Nobody is going beyond this, okay. Nobody is talking because all aspect missiles and all, in fact this is no longer such a big thing, 
Okay. Now, what is important is this fellow. For a fighter, what you call is 10 timber. I must be able to turn fast for that short period, even if I lost my speed or my height, but I am able to turn and point my missile toward the adversary for that short few seconds. I mean, so this becomes an important part. That is, this is something to do with the aircraft characteristics. The previous one is aircraft plus engine, but here is purely aircraft. So that is what is important. Okay. Then I will talk about rate of climb. Okay. Nowadays, uh, you can see for last 30 years, the rate of climb has not increased. There is no longer, nobody is going to 40,000 feet altitude intercept. There is nobody to intercept. Everybody is doing that. And if he is coming there, he has stealth, so you can't even detect him. So that is the situation. So now I talk about threats, talk about weapons, talk about radar, talk about aircraft, and talk about that. How do I put them all together? <laughs> How do I know which combination is the right thing? Can't say the best of everything. It's not possible, okay? It is so prohibitively expensive. Technology may not be available with you. So you have to have that. So what we are talking is properly develop a survival design of the aircraft that enables it to effectively conduct its assigned missions. The specific threats to the aircraft must be determined as well as the condition that exists at the time of the encounter. You should be able to determine. The determination referred to as mission threat analysis. Mission threat analysis, that's what it is. The typical tasks are define each operation mode required by the specified mission, list the threats and threat characters applicable to the defined operational mode, analyze the aircraft operational modes and threats and determine the encounter condition. And then the required unconscious shall be used as a basis for the survivability assessment trade off studies before the design is finalized. This is the key point. For the transport aircraft, it's only market you are looking at. Here, you are looking at threat. Of course, there also there is threat from uh, competition. <laughs> okay. But this is the evolving threat, changing threat. This is a threat analysis. That's what I thought my talk today I want to bring to your notion. So, a typical. As I mentioned, this is the way air combat is done. Okay. Any book you see, it will show you that. This is the flight path of a closure support aircraft. It goes like that. These are the kind of scenario. See, um, now what happened? The whole battle area is full of vertical surface to air, weapons, tanks, all those kind of things. That fellow has to wade through that and still come out. Okay. So, <coughs> now what you call at the um, uh, forward edge of the battle. I showed you that line, that is called the forward edge of the battle. Okay, FIBA we call it. From that, it drop down aircraft near there, drop down into a valley to take advantage of terrain masking, I mentioned to you. A self proper radar there directed a, a, a system is in the vicinity, detects the aircraft with scanning radar, he will detect you. The observer inside that the vehicle looks at the approaching aircraft through an optical tracker and identify aircraft as enemy. <laughs> Optical he has done, there is no other way he has done, say in this channel. This radar is then switched to the target tracking mode. Meanwhile, the radar warning received in the aircraft detected the scanning signal from the this ACAC gun radar and alerted the pilot as to the type, location and status of the threat. The aircraft fellow is knowing. The pilot immediately ejects chaff, attempts to break the lock of the tracking web by maneuvering the aircraft. There is some chaff what you call, moment he throws it. That increase the signature, radar, uh, infrared signal so much that uh, that fellow will be directed towards that. Okay, the radar receiver of uh, sees the chaff and starts to track it rather than the aircraft. I mean, this is what I am thinking. The, that fellow can uh, say the track is going too slow, the chaff is going too slow. He will say this is not the aircraft. <laughs> this is not. You know, he will <laughs> detect it. Then you have to think. Now they are making chaff, which is uh, which is having its own propulsion system. <laughs> So, with that, that will move, move faster. <laughs> so, very interesting life is uh, there. Okay. So, encounter we can, uh, I was talking as a, uh, this is a typical mission. How in a threat what happens? I am just throwing, you can uh, read through there. So, let us see the characters of aircraft weapon system. What we are talking is a study of scenario reveals that the ability of the aircraft weapon system to accomplish ascent is dependent upon what? Number, availability of weapon system for the mission. It should be available, it is not easily being uh, maintained. It should be available for you to fly. Aircraft performance capabilities and handling qualities. Sometimes the um, handling qualities are not good. The pilot gets fatigued too fast. Then you cannot fight a war, okay. Then target acquisition capability, we discussed. The type, effective number of weapons carried. 
the command, control, communicate, other supporting system available, the aircraft signatures and countermeasures applied, okay, those uh, chaff is a countermeasure, okay, signature, then tactics used in terrain and weather conditions, ability of the aircraft to take a hit and survive, <laughs> okay, with all that you got a hit, let us say you are still survived, okay, to fight for another day, that also is an important thing to look at, these are all the things we have to look, okay. Then you are, uh, <coughs> so what are the things you are talking? You are talking about availability, number of systems acquired, reliability of the system, turn time between sorties, survivability of the, this is what determines the availability. The second fellow is performance, we are familiar, combat radius, dash speed, agility, loiter, push speed, maneuverability, payload, all are the performance. Then third is the handling qualities I mentioned to you. It's important because otherwise the pilot will get fatigued. Sir, sir, about the availability, I remember ah. one incident during this Hongiwala battle. Uh -huh. The aircraft was available, but it could not fly in the night. And it the didn't have the oh, blind army. It could not fly in the fly, night. Uh, that was, uh, that's what it's I used to. Uh, see, we used to have, we still have an aircraft called Jaguar. Yes, it doesn't have a radar inside. Okay, it's a, we call it as Mahabharata aircraft. <laughs> that means I after it is daylight, sun, bigel, you know, Mahabharata with the bigel, the war starts. Eh? Evening with the bigel, war starts. Jaguar has been designed for Mahabharata time. <laughs> so I don't know why we bought that aircraft. Okay, handling quality is the other thing. Then you talk about targets, you no know, target acquisition, navigation and targeting, visual field of view from the cockpit, onboard radars, flurk forward looking infrared signal, you should be able to detect this, radar is only electromagnetic, whereas infrared how do you do, there are floods we have to do, the flight vectoring assistance from airborne platform, suppose you are an AVAX fellow, he is seeing from the top, he will say you move like this and come here, it is a great advantage for you and of course forward air controller, there is a forward air controller fellow is sitting there, he will tell you. You come there and you bomb here. <laughs> so that is what they call. And weapons. We have discussed it enough about the weapons. Your bombs, your missiles, your guns, your rockets, okay. Each has a particular range and a particular effectiveness, okay. Olden days, I mean 1960s, people thought, I got infrared missile, I got missile. What is the need for gun? In fact, the initial MiG-21 aircraft which were, you came to India, also Russian had no gun, <laughs> but then in 65 war our fellows found the gun is the fellow who has really saved the NAT aircraft. So we quickly modified the aircraft, put a gun underneath. But now a gun is something you know you always have, whether you use or not, uh, no, but it must be there, okay. It's a, it's a kind of a, make the pilot feel are yaar kus to hai. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, now it is a powerful cannon, but uh, people now ask, what is the use of carrying this bloody 250 kilograms of uh, dead weight, yeah? Because if you are fighting a war, you are seeing the enemy 100 kilometers away, missile is uh, doing 50 kilometers away, what for this fellow is there, okay? Uh, but, uh, Last resort. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of a signal. And the supporting systems I mentioned. Command communication, fighter escort, threat <coughs> suppression, stand up jamming, target locators, and so these are, and signature and countermeasures, very, very critical fellows, okay, measures and countermeasures, okay, yeah, this is the kind of things, your signatures, radar, IR, visual, audio, okay, and countermeasures, warning receipts for same these jammers and all, above all tactics, you may have the best aircraft, but if you do not have the right tactics, you fall prey, okay, so that is what is there. The above character strongly influence susceptibility of an aircraft. This is what we call a susceptibility. So normally what do we do? We do what you call a measure of uh, mission success, mom, here also mom is there. <laughs> Without mom you can't manage, okay, measure of mission success, it is called S into MAM. Uh, this is a relative measure of the ability of the aircraft to accomplish the objectives in the presence of threat without the consideration threat effects. You are not uh, worried about if the threat, what it will damage you will do. Then SC this uh, threat effect, survival rate defined as the ratio of number of aircraft that return to the number of aircraft plants. You have sent uh, 20 fellow and uh, 2 have returned. <laughs> that is what, <laughs> yes sir. This parameter gives the defensive view of the mission. The more survivable the aircraft is, closer it is to unity, okay. More survivable means it is, if the fully survivable means it is one, 
Okay. So, if G is the mission, I want to destroy a particular area, so many dams, so many aircraft, so many things. So, then what are the number of aircraft I need in order to accomplish mission? That is L is the number. So, G to accomplish you know, the mission is the number of aircraft multiplied by months. Okay. So, this is the kind of, it is a very simplistic analysis I am showing. <laughs> It's a simple one, Naikar Sakta. <laughs> okay. So, that is the way you do a detailed what you call threat analysis and then identify what type of aircraft. If I have X aircraft, is X capabilities, how many such aircraft I must have. To support such an aircraft, what kind of what you call, uh, what you call the, uh, the surface to air missile system or air to air or AVAX or fuel, all those. This is a complete what you call a system. It is not even a system, it is a system of systems. This is what we need to do that. And then only after that you are able to determine. That means I am looking at threat, T, 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 eh? threat, tactics, technology, okay? geopolitical environment. You see, fighting is in, not independent because if he is a friend, even if he has got very good aircraft, it does not matter to me. But if he is adversary, a likely adversary, Likely adversary, then I have to work. So, be a geopolitical. The industrial capacity and capability. I have developed an aircraft, I have got an aircraft, I know the design, I have tested it. But if I cannot produce in numbers, I am again stuck. Okay? And also, having developed an aircraft, I must now think about the next generation aircraft. You continuously you go on improve that one. Then, what are your goals and ambitions? Do you want to be a world power? Do you want to be a regional power? Or do you want to save your skin? <laughs> what are your goals? What are your rights? Depending on that, you determine how many aircraft, type of aircraft, how you do. These are the kind of things what you are going to do. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I bored you sufficiently. <laughs> you. Ten minutes. We have, we have ten minutes. Yeah. If any other question, uh, if I am capable of answering. Some of, some of these points with respect to the Tejas aircraft, for uh. example, uh, what kind of stealth features have been provided? See, basically it is a small aircraft. It has 90% uh, surface area is composites. So, what happens? Everything else being equal, a composite with a better characteristics is there. And uh, small aircraft like NAT, a very small aircraft, the same performance but a small aircraft, you have uh, small aircraft means small signature. That is the second thing. The third thing is we have what you call coating, <coughs> yeah, what you call um, uh, 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 the canopy and all are coated uh, with some coatings whereby they prevent if uh, radar uh, something falls down there, uh, it will absorb that energy. It does not allow that to happen. Okay. Third, you can also put some what you call uh, the, uh, radar absorption ramps they call it, radar absorption materials they have been developed. Okay, that material is in the, what you call uh, high spot, uh, what you call hot spots you call. See, if you see the shape of the aircraft, um, it does not have any tail, does not have any canard. See, the, what happens in this infrared signature, any 90 degrees angle, it will be generating a huge amount of signature. Okay? Now, if I have a canard, that means I have added a surface with a fuselage, generates huge signature. I do not have. If you have a tail also, the horizontal tail, that also will generate. We do not have. So, that means those things who generate this extra signature, they have been eliminated. Thereby, the signature comes down. Okay. Small size. Second is this one. Third is you are able to reduce the number of flying surfaces. Okay. Because they add to their signal. So, you are trying to bring up. Plus, you also can add certain amount of radar absorption materials. Thereby, you can further bring down that. It is not a stealth aircraft, okay? it is a tactical aircraft, okay? but that is what you are now thinking about next generation fighter where you can do that and all that kind of thing. But in a tactical warfare where you are talking about distances of about 2 to 300 kilometers around the border, okay? maximum you use LCA for interdiction. You go little deeper to prevent enemy supplies coming there. What do you do? You, uh, what you call destroy the bridges, destroy the t vehicles coming, that kind of interdiction plus a tactical uh, support to your army and air superiority over your friendly territory, okay? Or just around the border, <coughs> forward edge of the border, what you call FIBA, 
you do that kind of thing. You are not going deep into it because it's a small aircraft, it's not meant to be that. For a deeper strike, today you use 230, okay? That is the kind of thing. This is a, something like three times, three and a half times the size of LCA, okay? So you have what you call a light aircraft and a heavy aircraft, okay? LCA is a light aircraft, that's it. I want to ask about the Rafale that India is having right now. Uh, Rafale? Uh, yeah, I don't, it's a good question. I think we do not need it. Why do you It's a good question. You know why I call it a good question? <laughs> I really do not know why we are buying that. Unless we love French people, we want French industries to prosper. Uh, Indians are very good. They want to see the whole world to be prosperous except themselves. Uh, they want British to be prosperous, Americans to be prosperous, Russian to be prosperous, French to be prosperous. We do not want to discriminate anybody. Everybody should be prosperous except ourselves. You have, you have rightly said, I got an LCA with a light aircraft. I have a Su-30, I have a heavy aircraft. I have a combination of these two for different missions. That's all. I do not need anything else. What we should put effort is how to produce more of them how to increase the indigenous content so that more and more things are done within the country. I think that is exactly what is required. Okay, somebody asked me why do not you write an article on that subject. Mm -hmm. So somebody also reminded me you are no longer in your government, you can write. <laughs> <laughs> but your question is the correct. This is the right thing. We do not need it. Just do not need it at all. But we have to produce more else, yes. Uh. We might not need it in the future, but right now the squadrons are falling down the <coughs> uh, this is a very interesting story. I must tell you another story for this. Huh? You have another two minutes. Okay, for stories. See, in those days, um, a few years back, maybe 10 to 11 years back, uh, we used to have in Times of India, you know, they have on the left and the right, you know, on the top, some, they used to have one, one more MiG-21 has fallen down. They used to write there, okay, one more, one more, video maker and all that, you know, the, all that, you know, they, except showing the video's photo, everything else they have done, okay, they have done that. Then what happened, people said um, our pilots are not getting trained, so big are falling down. So happened, fine, then they said, what do we do, train the pilots, we have to buy a Hawk aircraft, okay. So we place an order on the Hawk aircraft. After buying, placing order, not bought it, the order. Suddenly, Times of India, you never see anything telling you one more MiG is falling down. That means this technology has gone to such a level that after placing an order itself, uh, accident rate has come down. <laughs> Great, na? I hope the answer is clear. When I fly more, I have 600 mix. If I fly more, I will have more accidents. See, there is a story about Bangalore. The commissioner of policy said the Bangalore traffic accidents has come down. He said, how are you, what great things you have done? Simple, Bangalore traffic is so heavy, a vehicle cannot move. If you move only, you will make an accident. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it is like that story, you know. Are you, if you fly the aircraft only, you will have accident. If you do not fly, how will you have accident? Naturally, you will have accident. Naturally, huh? one day or other, you will have accident. But the rate of accidents are not increased. Only thing is the, the subscription times of India by that fellow advertisement money has come down. So no longer is paying money to write that one. Otherwise, if I place an order, it's like telling I place an order on supercomputer, your CFD codes have now started working huh, by placing an order. Huh? That is right. That is the way. This is the, we have what you call vested interests <coughs> trying to influence the thinking of the people. MiG-21 is one of the finest aircraft ever designed anywhere in the world. It's a unique design, okay? It's a unique design. It's a beautiful aircraft. Of course, it's old aircraft. You have to replace it. I'm not telling the whole land because you old grandmother, you hold her. I'm not telling that. But it's a beautiful aircraft. How suddenly it become a widow maker, yeah? As if widows are in short supply. <laughs> it's not so. See, what I'm telling is, there is a subtle influencing of our mind, telling that somebody, you know, when we flew the LCA in 2001, it's on 4th January, there were US sanctions, a lot of things. So some uh, uh, air marshal, air chief marshal comes, so no, 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 we have bought all electronic items from Sweden. He said, of all the fellows, why I should fly from Sweden, man? Huh? Why should I buy? But that's what is right. The idea is to tell, 
नो नो वी नथिंग इंडिजिनियस इन दिस एरिया पूरा खरीद के लगा दिया खरीदो नाउ डज ऑल एडवर्टाइजमेंट यू नो बाकी सब छोड़ो खरीदो स्लैप डील एवरीबॉडी टेलिंग लो सो दैट इज द माइंड सेट व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग इज समटाइम्स वी डोंट थिंक थ्रू वी गेट कैरीड अवे बाय दिस सटल प्रोपगेंडा व्हेन द एलसीएफ फ्लू एंड विद इन वन मंथ और सो देयर वाज अ एग्जिट व्हाट यू कॉल एयर शो इन बेंगलोर so our fourth flight was in an air show you don't fly an aircraft in an air show where thousands of people unless you are sure about the safety of the aircraft so there was a british uh, what do you call uh, bae systems fellow who was sitting by my side he says i will ask them order for 200 aircraft he said is it always the kadu swaika who would have bought from uh, the uk no uh, they are no better kadu than us <laughs> <laughs> so that is what happens see that's what i'm never get carried away have a scientific way of looking at things look at i have to have you don't say i want the bloody f35 yaar kya leke kya karoge there is no meaning them that's why you need to do a threat analysis my idea of agreeing to give a talk uh, to professor pant is not only to bore you but also to <laughs> tell you is the threat what you have to see your sense needs a better why do i need ya I have two adversaries. He immediately is um, breathing down my neck is uh, on the west side, and at a distance breathing is on the east side. Do bite hai hamara saath. Usko dekho na. And do you plan your strategy, plan your aircraft, plan your tactics, and do that. That's what we should do. Okay. Uh, that's what. Don't get swerved. Well. I hope my example has helped you. <laughs> How much do we use satellite technology in the? Quite a lot, quite a lot. Because today all navigation is satellite-based navigation, and in fact, in future we have that Gagan called uh, uh, wide area augmentation system. As a result, of today you can have uh, all-weather takeoff and landing capability, precision navigation, what you call it, precision navigation. You can just land without in all-weather conditions. That's what you need. GPS systems in we use, but now uh, India is developing what you call IRNSS, Indian Remote uh, uh, Navigation System. In this whole zone, that fellow will replace the GPS. So now you can uh, what you call uh, home on to that fellow. Wide area augmentation system supported by IRNSS will make us independent. As on today, you are still using GPS, and R O you use what you call GLONASS. Okay. that is the kind of thing. interestingly the best uh, receiver gps receiver made in the world is some small company sitting in bangalore and he supplies all over the world <laughs> that is the fellow he is supplying okay uh, so some of the thing you may not know but something interesting is happening okay thank you mm -hmm. thank, thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you.